Hey guys, thanks for checking out the latest episode of J Cal's View. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you for being a subscriber to this podcast. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that follow button or hit the subscribe button and uh, join us on this journey, this journey of a journalist as we pontificate about pro wrestling, specifically the National Wrestling Alliance and the United Wrestling Network. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of news uh, that's been breaking lately with regards to the NWA and the United Wrestling Network. You can follow us at alliance-wrestling.com. That is your number one source for news and information for the National Wrestling Alliance. Now, we're going to get into some of the news that's going on right now in the NWA, but I would uh, it, I would be remiss if we didn't talk at least about the great new article that was put out by Tim with NWA Gold. Uh, NWA Gold is... Uh, well, he is a bit of a championship historian. He likes to talk about titles. And uh, he recently wrote an article. It's on our website, alliance-wrestling.com, where he goes into a deep dive on the NWA Women's World Championship, uh, more affectionately known as the Burke. Of course, you can check that out. Also, every week we're doing a primer that leads you into Primetime Live. If you haven't checked that out, make sure you do. That way you could stay up to date on some of the news, uh, the new names and players that are joining this uh, weekly episodic pay-per-view series. Um, of course, I, I would also be remiss if I didn't speak about um, the uh, podcast that we're doing on YouTube. Uh, that is the Alliance Guys podcast where we recap, we recap uh, the primetime live pay-per-view. Of course, this is uh, the exact opposite of the pre-party, which also airs on YouTube, where we, uh, you know, we preview the show. This is a recap show that happens Thursdays at 7 p.m. on uh, YouTube. That's 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Of course, the pre-party, that's on Tuesdays, ahead of whatever the NWA puts out on Tuesdays. And that's at 5 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Pacific, and of course, of course, guys, check out Wednesdays too, or excuse me, Fridays, not Wednesdays, for the hot tag. And that's on Instagram Live. Of course, we post the audio from that here, right here, where you're listening right now to the to Jake House. We also put the audio up from the hot tag. So I hope you guys are enjoying that as well. If you have any comments or feedback, please hit us up on any social media at the Alliance blog. Send me a DM. Tell me what kind of content you would like to hear. But before, uh, before we get to any of that, uh, let's talk about what's happening in the NWA, and we'll talk about that right after this. Right after this. I mean, right after this. Right, we're going to get into some of the news that's been happening around the National Wrestling Alliance, of course. I think it should be noted, I think that we should talk about uh, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood has a new executive producer. Now before you get all worried and before you get all upset, what this means, well I think it's a good thing, number one. First and foremost, Nick Bonanno is a trusted member of the United Wrestling Network family as well as one of David Marquez's uh, close personal uh, partners in producing this championship wrestling from Hollywood. He's played a vital role from m- being the main referee for the United Wrestling Network to also, uh, you know, being the the guy who counts counts the three when they went to China. He was the main referee. He refed the whole show. Besides that, he's also a line producer in Hollywood. He helps out with talent. If you guys have ever uh, seen one of the shows, you might only recognize Nick's face as the head referee, the head official in Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, but behind the scenes, he's constantly uh, getting backstage promos taken care of, making sure talent knows what's going to be happening on these events, and adding him as an executive director will allow Dave Marquez to take a step back from producing Championship Wrestling from Hollywood and be able to focus that time, effort, and energy into new products. And new shows. Well, of course, he's still going to be the main uh, director, excuse me, main producer for uh, the primetime live show, as he said so much in his comments, uh, indicating that he was leaving Hollywood. But this also allows him to search for new business opportunities with that championship wrestling uh, uh, methodology. So, if you guys aren't familiar, championship wrestling from Hollywood is 
it's kind of the signature program of the United Wrestling Network until the pay-per-view series. In Hollywood, that show is syndicated all across the country. It was in different markets all over the U.S. Uh, but then they took it a step further. They added an additional show in Arizona. Now, these two shows are completely different. Championship Wrestling from Hollywood and Championship Wrestling from Arizona. Now, Dave Marquez has been almost hands-off on the group in Arizona, and now he's hands-off on the group in Hollywood. But the thing I want to add about Hollywood is that that program is is uh, repackaged in market-specific areas. So, like in Memphis, you see a, a different version of the Championship Wrestling from Hollywood show that includes like local hosts and uh, graphics are somewhat different, but all in all, it's the same show. Now, Dave Marquez has this opportunity that he won't be a part of producing the Hollywood show, and he'll still have this opportunity now to, to go on and try to get the Hollywood TV show in more markets and, and make that more, uh, a, uh, more of a tool to help, again, get that United Wrestling Network promotion out there. So I think that's a pretty cool thing. Um, of course, I'm excited to see what's next for championship wrestling from hollywood uh i've talked to nicholas uh bonanno many of times i consider him a friend i'm very proud of his accomplishments in hollywood and i think he's going to do a great job um it should also be noted that dave marquez used to direct the show in hollywood for many many years until i want to say like maybe the last two or three years where he stepped aside and promoted billy trash to the head director now billy uh also directs nwa power uh, that when that show was on air so it's it, it's been a long time coming but you can see dave marquez kind of slowly pulling back the reins and allowing his team to take over which i think is going to be uh instrumental instrumental that's not the right word it's going to be important to the growth of not only the championship wrestling from hollywood brand but also united wrestling network so the other news coming out of uh the pro wrestling world uh, via chris Sorry, I got a itchy ear there. Uh, via Chris Van Vallee, uh, on his on his show, he spoke to former NWA Women's World Champion, former WWF Women's Champion, uh, Jazz, as you can see here. And Jazz announced her retirement from entering competition. Um, now, that's kind of a... A lot of people might be... Um, sorry, I'm kind of lost here. Uh, a lot of you might have thought Jazz might have already retired, to be quite honest. Uh, but she had been making a few appearances on the independent scene. She did show up in AEW recently. Um, but Jazz was a champion for work rate women's wrestling. When Jazz broke into the business, pro wrestling, when it came to women, was basically eye candy and, and honestly, a bathroom break. Um, the matches weren't competitive. Uh, the talent wasn't there. It was mostly, um, it was garbage. Now, Jazz broke into the scene. Well, let's take it back even further. Jazz uh, kind of got her reputation, made her name in ECW, Extreme Championship Wrestling. And she, uh, she joined the national landscape by becoming the, a part of the entourage for the Impact players. Impact players were Lance Storm and uh, just incredible. And they would be flanked by Jason Knight and, of course, Jazz. Now, during the course of this show, Jazz would eventually become a rival to Jason Knight. And they would have these intergender matches. Now, this was the first time that uh, a major promotion was kind of promoting uh, women versus men matches. And even this was around the time not the same time, but around the time that uh, Medusa was wrestling in WCW against men um, and eventually challenging for the WCW Cruiserweight Championship and winning it. Uh, but while Jazz was there performing at ECW, um, her story didn't end after the feud with Jason Knight. She started teaming with, with guys on the roster, wrestling other men, Steve Carino, uh, Chris Chetty, and, and it goes on and on. And she... She never took a step back. She never, she never looked weak in the course of this. Of course, um, during the time between uh, her joining the WWE roster, she was back in Southwest working in Texas promotions, working for NWA Southwest, 
Um, it was at this time she got signed by the WWE. I think we're looking about 2002. In less than six months of being on the roster, she wins the Women's World Championship on an episode of Raw by defeating Trish Stratus. She was able to defend that title against Trish Stratus and Lita at WrestleMania X8. Um, and that was in Ontario, Canada, if I'm not mistaken. And then later on, after she would lose the title, she'd go on to regain the championship. Um, and this time, she uh, defeated Trish Stratus at Backlash 2003. So she has, uh, you know, this her WrestleMania moment. She had this time in the WWE, and um, but that didn't end her career because, of course, like I said, she started in the NWA Southwest. Um, she was under the tutelage of Rod Price and, of course, her husband, uh, Rodney Mack. And while she was wrestling in the Southwest, she had come back to the NWA after leaving the WWE, wrestling for Cyberspace, NWA Cyberspace, where she'd win the Women's Championship by defeating April Hunter. This was like a 2005 era. And more as she would wrestle and progress, she would, uh, she would work these independent shows um, with occasional appearances with the uh, WWE's version of ECW, um, but nothing consistent, nothing concrete. Uh, eventually, she would come back to the NWA for what would be like a fourth time. This time, she would defeat Amber Gallows and Christy Jane in a three-way match in Sherman, Texas for NWA Texoma. This would be the time she would win that illustrious Women's World Championship and really would reinvigorate the title and the division. Now, she was off to a good start. I mean, she went to Japan, defended the title against um, Heidi Katrina for the Rena uh, Mikado 10th Anniversary Show. Um, she would head to NWA Big Apple, which was the uh, New York affiliate of the NWA at the time, and would defend against future champion Thunder Rosa. So the title was on this uh, basically a resurgence and then and then that's when things got really muddy because Bruce Tharp and Billy Corgan had entered negotiations to buy the NWA or sell the NWA so then Jazz has this opportunity now to defend the NWA Women's World Championship, but the NWA itself is in is in flux. We don't know what's going to happen yet. We keep hearing about uh, Billy Corgan, Lightning One, um, efforting to buy the NWA, and uh, as it turns out, um, we don't get the batches that we wanted to get because it, the title took a stall. And so when the title stalled uh, because of the uh, the NWA in flux. Um, we didn't know what was going to happen next. It was announced on October 2nd that all the uh, October 2nd, 2017, all NWA titles would be sealed with the exception of the world's heavyweight champion, who at that point was Tim Storm. Um, so fast forward a year to the 70th anniversary show, the NWA begins to recognize the women's champion without crowning a new champion, without going through the tournament, they recognize Jazz. She has the only distinction of being recognized as champion after the NWA had froze all those titles. They they stripped they stripped the former champions. They stripped Cahagas, who was the national champion. They stripped the Heat Seekers, who were the former tag team champions. They stripped Mustang Mike, who was the North American champion. But and they never have even recognized Barrett Brown as the World Junior Heavyweight Champion. So there was this this stall pattern that again changes on the 70th anniversary show. And as that 70th anniversary show starts to kick off, um, you know, Jazz is successful, gets right back on the horse where she was, defeats Penelope Ford, retains the title, then she goes on to face other wrestlers like Jordan Grace and uh, Heather Monroe and starts performing at a high level. We're expecting these great things for Jazz. And then, uh, unfortunately, due to injury and some personal issues, she forfeits the title uh, just ahead of the Crockett Cup 2019. Um, but as champion, uh, she would hold that title for 948 days. That's a feat that I don't think we're going to see on any title. Um, you know, maybe Nick Aldis can reach that soon. I mean, he's already passed, surpassed 700 days 
as world's heavyweight champion. Uh, but I don't foresee another champion being able to take that title for, you know, a full three years. And it looks like, you know, maybe Thunder Rosa, she's on a, on a hot streak right now. But again, that's something that is uh, very, very, uh, very, very uh, respectful and certainly Hall of Fame worthy. Before we get to the NWA news and information that's going around this week, I just want to say happy birthday to NWA Power. It was 365 days ago that the the phenom that took the internet by storm, Power, started broadcasting on youtube.com forward slash the NWA at 6.05 Eastern, 3.05 Pacific. And on the very first episode, we had the matchup between Tim Storm and Nick Aldis. The match that uh, essentially, essentially was the last chance that Tim Storm was going to be able to wrestle for the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. Now, there was a lot of other matches on the card, but I mean, that was specifically the highlight. That was what kick-started NWA Power. Now, we've heard from Nick Aldis. We've heard from Billy Corgan. I even tweeted Nick Aldis, and he said that his primary concern right now is getting NWA Power back on the air. Uh, we've talked about the survey from, uh, from the NWA that recently came out. It seems like NWA Power will return probably behind some form of pay window. But at the end of the day, uh, power's coming back. It's the same thing that I've been saying for a better part of eight months. It's the same thing that I've been saying, uh, you know, all along. NWA, uh, this is the NWA podcast, was saying the same thing. Uh, we were very, very clear that the NWA would be returning in some form, in some capacity. So I did want to just celebrate that moment. And also, I just wanted to play this audio for you right here of Nick Aldis talking about that match. Just just a little clip of him hyping up that match with Tim Storm. Listen. Because you need the stakes to be high. Because if you're going to be the best you can be, you need to have everything to lose. Now, it's up to you. Yeah. 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 